This guide is meant to be a newcomer's guide. This is from it is too far away. A night elf monk named SNL 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 -A. Something like that. Okay. SNL says they've been dungeon raiding PvPing as a brewmaster monk since early 2016 during the later part of WAD. There have been substantial changes from WAD to the pre patch clash. They expect further refinements. This concise guide is meant to be a newcomer's guide to brewmaster monk tanking in PvE situations. I hope to have a PvP guide later on, blah 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 blah, due to ever changing specs, pre patch, guide, regard, jumping, brewmasters, discuss. Um, the idea of tanking has changed quite a bit from Warlords of Drainer to Legion. Whereas in Warlords of Drainer, many tank specs were meant to be like shields, basically in a raid. In the dungeon, we can absorb a lot of damage. However, Blizzard is redesigned and they want to make the class with more distinction. Alright, why brewmaster? I love monks. A ton of monk alts. Why? What? This person has a ton of monk alts. For me, the class is the class is fantasy is fitting. It's just fitting to their interest level. And martial arts, Wuxia films, Jackie Chan or Jet Li. Here's an example of this type of fighting. What are the main changes for Brewmasters from Warlords of Drainer to Legion? Defensive cooldowns have been nerfed. Check out my oh, hey there, chum. How can we help? Okay. That is the sound of the subtrain. If you like this channel, like, comment, and subscribe. Show me some support, show me some love, and I'll continue to provide content. I'll get the job done. They say defensive cooldowns have been nerfed. Lower mitigation, longer cooldowns, active mitigation, uptime and potency reduced across the board. Resolve's gone. Instead, heal absorbs, scales, blah, 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 blah. Stat priorities change. Talents and stat priority, rotations and taunting. Then they post again. They say, this is back in July, July 25th. We're, we're in September now. I'm sure there's probably quite a bit that's changed. I'm going to try to find something that's less wordy, that's more like, get to the pointy icy veins is pretty legit i like icy veins but noxic is something i remember from a while back i'm gonna check that out that's like og style single target rotation so they just get straight into tanking rotations all right here let's go to the intro welcome to wow legion navigate comments Okay, stat priority. These people say, let's go back to character. Let's see if we can multitask here. Values. The way we have our values set up is it appears as though we're prioritizing haste above, they say to prioritize haste above everything and that's what we're doing we're we got haste at 1.36 
and then it says mastery and crit are equal mastery and crit are equal on ours and then agility and versatility agility 75 versatility 39 okay stamina increases your health haste increases your dots and healing and global cooldowns they say the frequency of procs from gift of the ox is affected by haste this as well is so we're kind of doing that we got that pretty much the down we did stats earlier the they actually have they weights here and i think i'm going to switch and do their versions uh their ways are twisted Let's they see. have forgotten the old vows they say stamina is 12.05 there is one who remembers one and then they say haste is 9.05 in the old ways 9.05 they say master and critter 755 and pass the trial 755 crit is 755 and then we're gonna do like we used to do back in uh, wrath whenever people used to care a whole lot about gear score I would have a item level set where whatever I could wear that was the highest item level was something I kept in my bags and that boosted my actual character item level by you know whatever X amount whatever they wanted to see at the time and then uh, what I would do what I would actually tank in or DPS in would be a different set that I kept in my bags and it was very annoying to have to switch those pieces out but I would have like outfitter do it for me so it wasn't too bad and uh, I would actually have like my my practical use set you know that I had equipped for the dungeons and then I would actually have my you know inspect my gear score set in my bags so I'm gonna almost exclusively follow what this is telling me for this guy because I haven't done that on all my tunes uh, yet all I've done is just equip the highest item level stuff and that seems to work pretty well for most of my guys but the monk I'm gonna actually try to do him the legit way the back in the day way. Crit 755. 755. Agility 605. 6.05 is agility 605. And versatility is 455. Where are you at, verse? Versatility. Okay. And apply. Enable Dougie with a recorder right there. I don't know if I applied those. Oh, Pawn actually has a string that you can put in. Okay, so now Dougie should be following the same thing Pawn's saying. 240, 240, okay. 110. It says all that versatility is pretty whack for me here. So we're keeping that for uh, posterity purposes. And this is what we're actually going to roll with. Alright. Now, back to the guide. Single target rotation. Oh, no, no, no. That's Icy Veins. Icy Veins and Noxic should be saying the same thing. If it's all legit. Talent build. Max performing talent build. It should all be situational, but according to this guy, it says below is a talent build we recommend based on a mix of simulcraft, which is like, I guess, Speak. what used to be called uh, Kitty Rar. I think it was called Rar. They have a simulation thing. Spreadsheets, in-game testing, collaboration with other players, many different combinations can be very effective. So while the below build is recommended, we still encourage you to look at each option instead of just simply using the build. And know the strengths and weaknesses and help ta tailor the build to yourself more. Information on each tile is we're making a guide for Legion. Okay, so what they are, they recommend is Tiger Eye Brew, or Eye of the Tiger, and, and that makes a lot of sense. I mean, that's what I used to have before I had to do this quest, actually. Yes, Eye of the Tiger. 
They say use Tiger Lust, which in my opinion actually makes a lot of sense too because you have two rolls and then you could Tiger Lust afterwards. Whereas Chi, uh, what is it? Chi Torpedo, you only get the full benefit of Chi Torpedo if you do like what I was doing at the end where you'd have one Chi Torpedo and it increases your movement speed. And then right before that movement speed expired, the 10 seconds, you would use the second one and then get a full another 10 seconds of Chi Torpedo movement speed. Plus the distance you traveled between Chi Torpedoes. Um, Tiger's Lust is kind of the same because uh, you get two rolls and then uh, beefy movement speed. But 30% and 30% is only 60%. You know, and that's after you've done 30% run speed for 10 seconds, then you get another 10 seconds of 60%. Whereas with Tiger's Lust, you can just have 70% on demand, which is more, and, you know, it's whenever you want. It's not, you don't have to use it consecutive in order to get the benefit, whereas, like most situations, you're not going to have an area that you can run that far. So this just makes a lot of sense mobility-wise, in my opinion, because you got two rolls for, like, you know, small movement phases, and then one tiger lust for removing your roots and snares, like it says in the tooltip. And then also, like, you know, if you really need to book it across a great distance, then you got two rolls and a huge sprint that you can use. And it's only a 30-second cooldown, so that's not too bad. So Celerity, again, is kind of like Chi Torpedo, where you're only getting the benefit if you're not letting the cooldown max. So, I don't know. I, I like Tiger's try. List a lot better in... In my opinion, that is a better stat. So I agree with that so far with what Noxic is saying. It says Black Ox Brew next. And this says Black Ox Brew is chug some Black Ox Brew, which instantly refills your energy, your iron skin, and purifying brew charges. Okay. Versus what I have is Gift of the Ox has a 60% increased chance to trigger based on your missing health. And even with that 60% chance, I only see like one or two of those pop out at a time. And maybe it's because my haste is kind of low. And they say Gift of the Ox is really dependent on your haste. And just in case you don't know, Gift of the Ox is when you take damage, you have a chance to summon a healing sphere visible to you. Moving into it causes it to heal you. Um... That doesn't proc very often, and it's haste dependent, so the more haste you have, the more chance it has to summon one. But even with the 60% increased chance, like I said, I don't really see a whole lot of them. And this is, uh, they're recommending Black Ox Brew over even Light Brew, which reduces the cooldown of your Iron Skin and Purifying Brew for by, by 3 seconds, and their maximum charges by 1. I don't really know how those work yet, so... I've been wasting them all along, and having more of them would just give me more to waste. With Black Ox Brew here, I can at least refill my energy instantly. And that's something I know how to use. <laughs> so, I'm going to agree with them on that as well. So, we'll put that on F3. Very situational cooldown there. All right, 1.5. So both of those are kind of like DPS, but defensive as well. And then they say leg sweep, which I agree with because I'm using that. Ring of peace is decent, but 45 seconds for an eight second thing and people getting knocked out. Like as a tank, you don't want people getting scattered everywhere. You want to keep them grouped for the melee to AOE. So that can actually be kind of against you. And it's a really long cooldown. Summon Black Ox Statue. This is good if you get like a boss fight where ads come out and you want you don't want to have to worry about the ads. Like you want some like this could be like your your off tank, just something that taunts everything off of your healers and casters, which again is very situational. Like only certain boss fights will have ads where you have to kind of place that. Leg sweep's always useful. This is a really good defensive cooldown as well because you stun stuff for five seconds and allow your healer to catch up with heals. They say healing elixir, which I agree. Also below 35% health, it auto pops it. Diffuse magic could be a good one, but it's a situational one, and it puts the damage back on them, which is, uh, I guess, a, a damage increase. But 
Damp and Harm reduces all damage of your next three attacks. This one, I ran with this for a while, but I hardly got hit for as much as it, it caused to trigger it. Like, I never really got...